Hi, welcome to the Untitled.jpg podcast, where we talk about art, movies, and anything that comes to mind. Today, we actually have Maria. She is a textile designer and an illustrator, but I want her to talk more about that. Hi, Maria. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Good. So I kind of want to talk to you about like your job and how you got that, because it's very similar to uh, Gabby's job, where she's a yeah. print designer for her job, and... But you do more of like textile work and you actually do illustration for your job. And I want to learn more about that, especially for like people coming up from college and trying to learn more on how to do that. Mm -hmm. So can you talk more about that on how you got into being a illustrator and a textile designer? So as far as being an illustrator, I honestly was always into art in high school and I made that a big priority. And when it came time to pick colleges, I... Honestly, like the only art school I applied to was FIT, and then I applied to other universities for completely different careers. Yeah, like absurdly different. Um, long story short, I, 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 FIT was the most affordable option for me, and and um, that's actually where I met you. Yeah, yeah, we <laughs> met the first year. Yes. Um, so I went into school uh, for illustration. I honestly just really loved art, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do with it when I got to college, and I felt like. Um, as a first generation person going to college that like I really needed to go in in general but um, I went mostly like the first two years to figure out what I was going to do with my life and art in general right so it's just kind of figuring it all out as you went I mean me and you have kind of very similar stories where FIT was the one school (laughs) that we actually like finished the application for and and kind of committed to it so, like, if we didn't get in, we would have been, like, pretty fucked. But, um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I applied out. the night before the deadline. Yeah, I did the the night before the deadline. I did the final illustration for the portfolio that they asked for. Like, that it had to be, like, a life drawing or something. I, ha- I have to be completely honest. I did not follow the portfolio requirements. Yeah. I put, like, I was in AP art for, like, two years. I just put everything that I ever did oh, really? in a PDF, and I was like, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what I did. Uh, like, my art teacher, she was so helpful. On, She, like, helped me build the portfolio and, like, just do the work that needed to be done for that class. Yeah. She, like, um, I mean, it was just a part of her curriculum of, like, making your own sketchbook, like, building it. And then she gave us assignments to do in the sketchbooks mm-hmm. all the time. And those were the ones I actually submitted and worked out. But, um, so how did you start out at your... At my job? At your job, yeah. Um, So following the two-year associates program that I did at FIT for illustration, I took about a year off of, like, um, being in a defined major because Mm -hmm. I really, like, as much as I loved illustration and as much as I loved the freedom that came with it, I didn't feel like, for me personally, it was going to give me the stability that I needed in life and, like, the money and the health insurance. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Um, so I was actually looking through different programs. I was even considering, uh, transferring colleges for like just switching to a very different career. Um, and then one of, uh, our professors at FIT was mentioning like the textile design program to me and how, um, you know, those careers could be a lot more stable. Yeah. Um, so I switched over into that. I did that for two years and then in, um, the, at least at FIT, I don't know about other fashion schools, but the textile program requires you to do an internship at the end of your, um, at, at your, I guess your senior year yeah. of the program. And I got an internship at a company called Schumacher, which is a, a pretty huge, um, like custom, like homeware, uh, design company. And they, they make a lot of like different like patterns and shit for, for yeah. curtains and like a variety of homeware things um the one important thing about textile design if anybody that is actually interested in doing it is that there is a whole world of different um careers that you can have within textile design like you can work for men's kids women's homeware pets um yeah so it's like a bunch of stuff it's applicable anywhere um i did meet one illustrator like slash artist that was working for schumacher um so i do think that they can you know, you can become a textile designer without having the... Yeah, I mean, that's kind of like with Gabby. She was she just had, like, an illustration portfolio, yeah. and she started as an intern for this company, like... And they, they were the ones that were like, are you interested in print design? Mm-hmm. And they kind of just built her up within the company and then hired her right out of college. Well, I think 
within like two months yeah. in she was already working for them yeah like, full time um so after i did that at schumacher i graduated and then i immediately got a job at a print studio and again thankfully fit has a senior show every year where they invite people from industries to come check out your work yeah so that definitely made it a lot easier um I would say like that the best thing that I did in order to get a job was not even like socialize as much with my um, my all the other students. But like on the senior show night, like I made sure that I talked to everybody that yeah, walked in. Yeah, it was all about networking. Yeah. Even I, if they didn't ask me for a card. Yeah, I gave them a card. <laughs> so I got this new thing for like because, you know, like I'm tired of like buying a stack of like business cards yeah because you know they go to waste pretty much you give it to somebody yeah. and then like they'll throw it away or whatever so i got this one with like a, the you know like the tap feature that you, mm -hmm. your credit cards have so i have that as a business card that's really so cool. i'll just tap it on their phone and give them all my info that's really cool yeah because i thought it'd just be a better way to do it and then it's like a, a icebreaker for that, in it that is sense, yeah you know? Um, another thing I did is ask them for their information. Right. Because which is um, after the senior show, the day, the following day, because um, fashion is very competitive yeah. and it is hard to find a job because it's not just FIT, but it's also like all the other fashion schools that are trying to get jobs. Exactly. Um, so the next day, I spent the entire day emailing everybody. That's awesome. That I got information from. And I got a couple of interviews. Um, and I liked one's print studio a lot and I thought that like because I did have an illustration background and I guess I should explain the difference between print studios and like yeah. corporate right so print studios basically just make an array of different prints um and then they have a sales team that sells those prints to big companies so like Hallmark like Macy's like I there's so many print studios out there and it's a big industry where they just make money off selling prints to big companies and then, you know. Yeah. So I thought that I would enjoy that. I did not. <laughs> um, but it was a really good learning experience and I did get something to add to my resume. And I would say that like in the beginning of your career, even while you're still in college or not, um, that it is important to just get as much as you can on your resume. Even yeah. if it's an unpaid internship, like yeah, they they're looking for that experience. Yeah, I mean, I you you saw me struggle just trying to get the job that I do have now. I'm three year we're three years out of college. Yes, and I <laughs> and I finally have the job that I wanted after yeah. college. You know, it takes it takes a time. It's time, man, and you just need that experience. Like I wasn't able to get any inter internships because you know. I was paying for college, so I needed actual jobs to, like, make money and, and like, put myself yeah. through, through it, you know? Yeah, and, uh, like, I waitressed the entire yeah. four years that I was in school. So yeah, yeah. I, I would say that, like, the biggest thing, which I'm not sure how helpful it is because it isn't tangible, but, like, you have to be consistently persistent. Yeah. And that brings me to the point of, like, when I decided that I no longer wanted to work at the studio for personal reasons, um, I didn't work in design in any field for two years yeah wow uh, i was doing like um commissions and like small uh projects for like local businesses and like doing their websites and stuff or like logos yeah so you're just like kind of freelancing yeah but I, I was collecting um portfolio stuff and then also just experience again to just like keep yeah. adding to my portfolio because any design experience is experience and um i actually i work at macy's as a textile cad designer now um, but I actually applied to Macy's like three times before. Right. I remember yeah. you going through all that. The first time the pandemic happened and I <laughs> lost my interview that like, uh, got an interview next day pandemic. So yeah. I, I lost that opportunity. Then I was super bummed out. And then I spent like the, the following two years just applying. Um, and because I did go through that, I think that like, I'm in a good position to give people advice because it feels very hopeless when you can't find a job and you're just kind of like doing whatever you can to make money. Yeah. Um, and it was really frustrating because I did pay to go to school, you know? Um, so I kept a day job. I continued maintaining like small little jobs doing whatever. Um, and I always kept in contact with like really good friends from college. Yeah. Um, so one of my friends, her name's Heiju. She works for Macy's and she got hired there like straight out of um, college. And she actually helped me get the job. So I would say that it is really important to maintain connections. Yeah. So speaking of which, with connections and all, 
I got, I want to say that I kind of got help getting this job too from a friend from high school who he, for, for this company that I work at, he was like an app designer for them. Mm -hmm. And I found that out through Facebook because he was <laughs> posting about it. I was like, oh, dude, I just applied, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, he put in a good word for me. And yeah. I think that had to, a lot to do with me getting this job, too. So always make friends, you know, in yeah. the industry. Make sure, like, don't ever burn bridges. I'm not one to burn bridges when it comes to these kind of things. And, you know, there's always going to be help out there. There is. I mean, I've made one or two mistakes in yeah, regard to I that. Mean. But um, I think it's really important to maintain good friendships yeah. and to have people that not only are good friends to you, but that like support your work. So I will say like her to her spe specifically, I'm very thankful because she helped critique my portfolio. She's helped me do so many things. And, and I do think that in the time that you are looking for a job or trying to get into the, the field that you want. Yeah you should actively be updating your portfolio, have a website. Like I, I did mine through Squarespace. Yeah, same and, thing. And um, I would just email everybody. Yeah, so like you said, when you, um, after your sh your senior show and you like emailed all, the, all these people, Yeah. how many like responses did you get? So I got, I think maybe about 10 responses back. Out of um, how many? Out of probably 20. Okay. Well, that's so, not bad then. That's yeah, like half. Yeah. yeah, it's like half. And I did it so um, so quickly after that they still remember. Exactly. You don't want to wait like yeah. two weeks or a week later or something because then they'll probably forget. Yeah, I'm a firm believer in shooting your shot. Like yeah. in, in relationships and work and everything, like shoot your shot because yeah. you really have nothing to lose. So I, I, I heard back from about 10 people. Half of those responses were like, oh, I'm sorry. Like we're going with somebody else or... We were just looking or something yeah. like that. And then I had a couple of interviews and I was really persistent with every single one. And um, I went to every single interview and I did it like evaluate what I would like to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I would I would say that's important in textile design because th um, the field is so broad. Like I know Gabby does women's wear and like sleepwear. Yeah, I do men's wear. So it, yeah. they're like two completely different fields. And then there's also home and kids. And yeah, like, I feel like with her, like her company is just solely like women's wear, like yeah. women's intimates. But you, you can go branch out to other kind of th stuff because it's yeah. Macy's, you know, you're building everything. Yeah. And what's funny is that I actually applied for a women's brand. Yeah. Um, But I think I made a, a good impression and they wanted to hire me for a different um, awesome. area of yeah. their company. But in reality, that's really how I, I was able to get my job. It was persistence, updating my portfolio, and then obviously having a connection helps. But it's like once you get that interview, you have to make sure that you're prepared, especially if it's a corporate company or a big company like Macy's, mm -hmm. because the competition is very, yeah, it's very alive. Lot. And for that job, do you think it's like a very fast paced environment for you, like on way, the ways that you have to work it now, especially with working remotely? How is that? Um. So I would say that I got lucky in the sense that my team is very supportive. Everybody is really chill and they don't really make anything feel stressful, mm -hmm. even when we do have urgent deadlines. Um, so in that respect, like I don't feel overwhelmed, but I definitely do have a lot of work. And it's definitely like uh, throughout my day, I'll jump from project to project. So like from I'll be working on one print for one thing and then... Yeah. Uh, something happens so like and then a, I have to like fix something else a bunch of like multitasking yeah kind of thing, right? it yeah. definitely is and I definitely do think it takes a specific type of personality to get used to that without getting stressed yeah um thankfully with my ADHD it's it's fine because <laughs> it keeps me from getting bored exactly yeah um and I oh one more thing that I will say about my job is that like I'm hired for menswear but I actually also do their women's so it's like when you work in textile design for a big company, you will probably get borrowed, especially if you're an yeah. assistant, you'll get borrowed to like do a couple of different things. Yeah, I think that's also like just the life of an illustrator, graphic designer, too. It's just because we know so much like kind of like things that we were taught in college or, or just us teaching ourselves, we're able to adapt to other kind of things and like, yeah, just kind of work on anything that we're given, you know? Yeah. And I, that brings me to like I, I just remembered I had this conversation with my my uh, senior designer is um, about criticism. Yeah. Um, especially in fashion, don't take it personal. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no. Um, but, and I feel like school really did help us like get used to getting criticized. <laughs> Those critiques, man. I mean, my favorite were um, Carlos Aponte's uh, 
critiques mm -hmm. he was real like he'll tell you straight up if it was good or bad I yeah mean, I, my yeah. favorite story was like I, I think i told you before it was just like the first drawing i did of my first semester in fit and i had him at my first year and then up until like the last drawing i did for his class he, he literally put it in front of everybody of the, of the critique <laughs> and, and called it beauty and the beast oh. so <laughs> you know I laughed, but it was just like, damn. Did it hurt? Yeah, it hurt. But, you know, like, that's just the whole time at FIT, you know. Yeah. These are just constructive criticisms, like, genuine things that you're going to learn that you shouldn't take it personally because we're just, they're just trying to make you, like, learn better. And it just gave us a thicker skin, too, to take on criticism. It definitely did. And I also yeah. think, like, as an artist in general, even if you don't want to work for it, because not everybody does, yeah. you know. Some people just want to be artists. Yeah. Um, it's important to take criticism and not just be, like, so in your own little world with your artwork. Yeah. Um, But I have a story about Carlos, too, because Ooh. I... I remember one time he liked one drawing that I did and he kept it. And I literally uh, lived off the high of that forever <laughs> because he was like, nobody did good in this class except yeah, for this one. It's important, man. I mean, like, like especially when he's like that hard, because then once he knows, you know, that he likes something that you did, then that's what you work off. I was of, like, you know? I made it. It's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, um, so what do you, what did you think about your experience with art, like with college? With college? Do you need it? Do you not? Do you regret it? What are like the pros and cons of going to college? So I do know some friends, specifically one friend that is an artist and he went to school for two years, but like for something, he went for fashion, for fashion yeah. design. Um, and then he started his like um art career like after that and so like i because i do have that example and a couple of other friends that didn't go to school for art um i do think that it is possible to become an artist and succeed but it's a lot more work yeah um for me personally i think that college is, is a good experience people should get even if they only do their two-year associates um i know art school is a little tricky because it's expensive and yeah you know I would say that art school, unless you do something like textiles, you aren't always promised a career after. Yeah. I mean, and like what a lot of these companies are looking for, just like graphic designers, not specifically an illustrator. Yeah. But what's good about college was that they taught us all the different kind of th things that illustrators can do. Like they right. taught us how to be a photographer. They taught us how to be graphic designers, like logos and all of that. Yeah. And be illustrators. So we can kind of be like that jack of all trades kind of thing. Right. And and I do feel that that's, like I said, that structure is important. I yeah. think it's important to go to college. And I would say that, you know, if you're in high school thinking about um, where you should go for college and stuff like that, and you want to be an artist or you want to pursue something creative, I would say to go to school. Yeah. Um, just in general, because I do have a friend who is an artist, but he makes a lot of his income being a graphic designer. And mm -hmm. sure, you could, I, I guess, find a job. But a lot of people, like, if we have to be realistic, do look for a degree. Yeah. You know, it, it's exceptionally easier to get a career if you do. Um, if you're going for like something for stability wise, I would stability, say. and yeah. I think that's important to a lot of people. Yeah. Um. Especially, like, in our community, like, in being Hispanic and being, like, children of immigrants and stuff, it is really important to have stability and make yeah. an income because, at least for my situation in my life, like, I am not just making an income for me. No. I mean, we're, <laughs> we're with our families and everything, helping out anywhere we can. I mean, they came here to give us that opportunity, you know? Yeah. And it's important to us to, uh, like, go through, through all these things to... Um, get this career and instability because we know what instability could be like yeah because of the experiences we did have mm -hmm. growing up you know of course i mean like um as you know like i in high school and college i cleaned houses to pay for tuition and to like make a living for myself so i could afford to live yeah um oh another thing that i think uh school is important for if you want to do fashion is to actually learn fashion you got to be in the now yeah, with cause, that. Cause yeah, because textile design looks like fun and everything, yeah. but it's very technical. And like you have to learn how to create repeats and how to um, you have to design in a way where you're thinking about how it's going to look on the body and like on, you know, on fabric, because it's going to look completely different. Like my dress, like on paper, would probably look 
I still don't understand different. how patterns work on like <laughs> garments or anything. And like, I'll go out with Gabby, and she'll be looking at prints on like T-shirts or just like, and, like on, on dresses and everything. And she would be like, "Oh, this is how big the repeat is." And I'm like, "Yeah, where do you even see that? You know?" <laughs> so it's just like you learn these things, and you have this specific knowledge that mm-hmm. nobody else understands. Oh, like today we went to uh, Burlington because her company sells to Burlington as well. And one of the pieces that she did had like a halo around it. She's like, my drawing didn't have a halo. What is this? What's going on here? <laughs> yeah, that's definitely so, a thing. I was just like, damn, that's so specific, mm-hmm. you know? And and also like as far as textile design goes, you have to learn about production. And like I, at least in my job, deal with vendors, which are like the people who actually make our clothes. Yeah. Um, so it, it's a very, I don't want to say complicated, but there's so many different things that you do in a day that... I think like if you do want to do fashion or even just fashion design because I um our design team went to school for fashion design and even they have to like you know do a lot of these processes so I do think school is important for both stability and also for training your eye and learning what you're actually doing and it's a lot easier yeah. to be in a program versus like trying to learn by yourself while also trying to make ends meet yeah sorry that was my phone <laughs> <laughs> um yeah you know it's like so I think like for for us stability was always important i mean i tried to go into like freelance and everything and i did get all that kind of work but it's just it wasn't for me you know you're always constantly worrying about like the amount of money you need for this month to be able to live kind of thing and just like be able to afford rent Mm -hmm. and in the beginning it's very tough so for me personally it wasn't like something i could do but i still do like all these freelance work after work after like my day job you know Mm -hmm. and who knows maybe eventually if that keeps up then i'll move towards maybe freelancing if that's something for me you know Mm -hmm. and that's why it's so important to to find that day job in the beginning that you do actually enjoy yeah because you don't want to be at a job from nine to five that you hate because that's then that's just gonna affect your creative process Mm -hmm. at least that's something that happened to me you know and it's draining but yeah like I personally really love what I do Mm -hmm. um and I enjoy it every day I'm so grateful (laughs) that I have this job um and it's just like I know that there's always that sense of like well I don't need college and like anything is possible and sure it is you know like we don't we don't know people's lives and there's plenty of people that have made their careers just being on the internet yeah um so it is possible, but I'm just saying for like a realistic day to day person. It's not it's not for everyone. Yeah. yeah. And and I do think that like when you're in college, it's good to keep your future in mind, yeah. especially in terms of money, because when you're like 18, 17, like you aren't really thinking of that. But like now that I'm 25, I'm like, OK, like I actually, you know, need to know when my next paycheck's coming. Exactly. Because yeah. I also tried to do the freelancing thing and I did you know thankfully i've always had like another job yeah but it was really difficult on the months where like i wasn't getting a lot of work yeah and then you were just relying on your day job which yeah. that's great for like security but like if you didn't have that then what mm-hmm. were you gonna do you know yes and um yeah i mean it's like we said it's just it's not for everyone people there are people that could do it they have that kind of hustle mentality to like be able to yeah. get that like be persistent and get that job every day somehow and they have amazing work but Mm -hmm. you know like when you're starting out and you got you already have things to worry about it's it 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 could get like very draining on on certain people Mm -hmm. you know and also it's like anything could be a start yeah exactly Mm -hmm. um is is the goal to be is it a goal for you to become a full-time like a full-time freelance freelancer or is that something that you're not really thinking of so personally Uh, I love my job and like I could definitely see myself doing this in the long run especially just because of the goals that I have for myself in my life which is like you know typical I want to have a family Mm -hmm. um I think for right now like it's it's really great but ideally I would love to get to a point where I have my own business um not necessarily in textiles but I'd love to have like a print shop or something right um and I've been wanting to get into like internet stuff not, not creepy internet stuff. Yeah, what do you mean? <laughs> um, like, I, I really wanted to start making, like, drawing videos and stuff like oh, that. okay, like, so, uh, like, kind of, like, yeah. tutorials kind of Kind of, like, or, tutorials, but, like, I don't know if you've ever seen studio vlogs on YouTube. 
I don't think but so. But there's no. a couple of illustrators that do that. And, like, I would love to enjoy... I, I would really enjoy to do that because it's, like, you have your own audience and you make your own things for you versus, yeah. like, I don't think that for me personally I would enjoy... I, I never really have, like, enjoyed making things that other people want with their direction. Okay, yeah. Does so, that make so sense? Not, so basically not being an illustrator for... For others, but, like, I would love... But make your own work. Yeah, like, kind of um... Thing. Like, I can't think off the top of my head, but there's obviously illustrators that, like, make their work and people want it because it looks like that. Yeah. So I would love to do that. Um, I'll get there eventually, but, like, for now, I'm just really happy where I'm at. Oh, that's good. So then, was there a time where you realized that you can make a career as an artist? Like, did you have a definitive moment? Um, A definitive moment? I wouldn't say it was a moment, but like a series of events. Okay. <laughs> um, when I was uh, doing illustration, like in the illustration program, I actually Carlos is like a big um, person that I looked up to, like while I was in school because he was making books and like doing all. Yeah, these different he does things. like children's books and stuff like that. Yeah, and, and like I think he still does editorials from, from time to time. Mm-hmm. Um, at the time, I was dating somebody who was also like working at a gallery. And I just, like, learned so many things off watching what he did on a day-to-day basis. Mm-hmm. And, I, and it became very real to me that I could make money, you know, doing this. And um, as time went on, and I, I think that, like, FIT was really important to me in that, is that, like, I kept meeting more people and talking to them. And, like, I would go to senior shows or, like, um, you know, the little events that they would have. Yeah. And just talk to people. And I think um, I went to the textile senior show um before I took my year off because I was just curious Mm. and I ran into somebody that was working at the time for um I think I was one of those print studios and I was just talking to her and you know she was explaining to me what she does on a day-to-day basis and like I think just from exposure to all those people it made me like like realize like oh I can do this like it's really realistic for me to be able to have a job yeah it's just like gonna take a lot of work yeah you know (sighs) I lost, I lost what I was going to say. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I talk a lot. <laughs> no, no, it's good. Um, yeah, so, okay, no, I got it. So then with with that in mind, with college and everything, that's the whole thing. It's just like it's all about the networking and making sure you you find your, your people in a sense, you know, mm-hmm. and like get those kind of connections. Connections and also just like information. Yeah, like just information like- on like the – area of expertise i would say yeah and and i also would say like not to like pinhole yourself somewhere because like we have friends that do an array of different things yeah yeah um but like to just like be very open to meeting people talking about what they do especially older people i think it's like easy to like shy away from talking to them sometimes because they are a little intimidating yeah yeah um but it's just like just listen to their advice try to put yourself out there as much as you can and that was really hard for me because as you know I'm really shy most of the time yeah <laughs> so I would say it's like to if you do decide to go to school to just be very open to not only talking to your the, the students around you but like really create relationships with your professors and with people that are visiting your school like take advantage of like all the shows that they do yeah. and all the guests that they bring in and like yeah. really attend like when the guests would come into classes I mean, I met, I have friends now that, that came as guests to like talk, talk to us about everything. And then I, I made connections with them and you know, that's also like if they have work coming in that they can't handle, they'll toss it to you if you can handle it. You know, I actually do that with one of my friends work. He can't handle. I end up doing. Yeah. So so that's why it's important. You know, and I feel like with illustrators, especially like if you have your set community, they're always going to help each other out. You know, it's not. It's not like a community of like vultures where it's like they don't want you to succeed either, you know, like they'll help you out yeah. where they can. Yeah. And that's also why it's like really important to meet good people, though. Yeah. Um, at least in fashion, like it can get competitive. And like I did work somewhere where people didn't want to show me anything. So it like it also is your environment, you know, like all that stuff, like where I work now, like I'm so grateful Especially for yeah. my senior designer because she will sit there and teach me Photoshop for like four hours. That's awesome. But um, I forgot what I was going to say, but that, that was the point I was trying to make. Yeah, yeah, no, it's important because then those kind of like relationships then lead to a new client work and then even connections with galleries. Mm-hmm. I mean, me and you did 
like a couple of galleries together yeah. that that we just knew from a mutual friend of ours. Yeah. And then, because I know out of college, if you don't do this, then you don't really know how to start out. Like, of course, yeah. I mean, uh, when we did those shows, I think like Instagram artists were like a really big thing. It was before the whole algorithm thing yeah. and everything, so it definitely was easier. But I would say like visit galleries in your town and like oh yeah, you know, talk to the people working there, talk to the artists there, and like. Um, when we did do those shows together, I remember when they hit me up, I was like, oh, I know X, Y, Z person. Yeah. Here's a list. And, and like, you know, as much as you want people to share you, share other people. Exactly. Cause then it just makes it a better mm-hmm. show, you know? And yeah. then it gives people an opportunity to show work that you wouldn't think, you know, would be out there, you know? Yeah. And you meet a lot of awesome people that way. Yeah. There's like a bunch of people I follow now that don't have enough followers and have like I legit know. stuff, you know, <laughs> and it sucks because I know. you want to like promote them more. But I mean, even I'm not even that big, you know, so, but you try your best and, um, but yeah, like with this, like you said, with the algorithm, it's just, it's definitely harder. Yeah. It's definitely harder now. So I feel like it's still like pay to play kind of thing. But you, I think if you take advantage of it and like, I know that reels are really popular right now and yeah. like just really I just I haven't figured out how to crack it yet with like at least my style of yeah. work, you know. I mean if like Instagram is your avenue of, of um generating an audience, then yeah. you know, you definitely have to like see what Instagram is doing. But I would say that YouTube is also like YouTube a really major tool. Yeah. That's gotten a lot better. I mean it's always been good with YouTube, you know, like as long as you got a, a catchy like um video that you put out they will like grab it and like promote it out. Mm-hmm. What I've been really into now is um, Twitter because Twitter. I feel like because with that when you post something, people can retweet it. If even if they like it, then their followers see that they like that. So it just I feel like it's just a better way to get more exposure for your work. Yeah, and the community is a little bit better there because you're directly talking to people within like with. With me, it's, like, within the poster community, I'm constantly talking to these people. Yeah. Anytime they, like, post something, you know, we talk, all that kind of stuff. Where I feel like with Instagram, I'm, I'm just kind of treating it as, like, a way for me to, like, post work. And then I'm I'm, I'm not really on there yeah. as much. You know, I, I, I post and then I, I leave, you know. Um, I kind of agree because, like, I, for a year or two, I stopped posting on Instagram completely just because, um, I don't know, I just kind of, like, was... I've never liked the idea of making things for the sake of posting them. So I just was like, this is all crap. I'm just going to stop. But I did find that like lately Twitch, which is like usually a platform for gaming. Yeah. Because I am so heavy into gaming and like I watch a lot of Twitch streams on a daily basis, almost too much. (laughs) Um, But there's a lot of artists on there. And like you can literally like if you if that if the internet is your avenue it's like great to take advantage of even that because even if you stream like for an hour a day you're still you're gonna generate an audience no matter what you do as long as like you're obviously yeah so you know creating work so even if you don't have followers they'll like promote yeah so your stuff kind of thing it, or so the way twitch works um i'll use gaming as an example like Twitch has, like, categories, so it's, like, gaming, music, whatever. Okay. Um, in gaming, they have, like, categories for specific games, so, like, yeah. say it's Monday and my favorite streamer, like, my favorite huge streamer isn't streaming, but I do want to watch, like, a Fortnite stream. So I'll just, like, look at, um, click Fortnite, and then, like, they just list whoever's live. At the moment. At the okay. moment. And then you just pick whoever, and it's not even in, at least from what I've noticed, it's not even in order of, like, who's most popular. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's good. So, but, yeah, so then that'll be able to, to help people, like, actually... Yeah, and, and, like, there's a big thing on YouTube called, like, Draw With Me's and stuff. It's, like, a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say that, like, if you aren't sure about college and, like, you want to use the internet, like, just really get into, like, what is on the internet. Yeah, I mean, like, TikTok right now. Like, yeah, and TikTok, like, too. Like, TikTok, you could just post a post something and it will reach yeah <laughs> everybody's thing somehow like even if you don't have followers they'll like shoot it out especially mm-hmm. at, le- at least that was what it was in the beginning i don't know how it is now yeah um, we're, we're a little old <laughs> it's not that we're old but um it, it's just like i think if people like it then it gets promoted more but if nobody's liking it or anything then it's just yeah. gonna get lost within that within its own algorithm but their alg- algorithm is much <laughs> better than i would say like instagrams yeah definitely i I don't think instagram is uh, such a good tool anymore 
Yeah, no. Um, cause even now, like I, I have like you know the the business in, uh, version of it where I could see the insights on stuff, and it's like I have okay, so I have fifteen hundred followers, right? And then I'll check how many people it's reached, like four hundred. So it's yeah. not even like all my followers or anything. Where at least before, like you'll post it in like chronological order, people will see it as long as they're going on. You know. Yeah. Um. I I don't know like. I don't have many followers on Instagram because, like, I'm not active on it. Yeah. Um, but in the time, like, a few years ago when we were doing those shows and stuff, like, at random. Like, I would just post a picture, put a hashtag of, like, whatever the artwork was about and yeah. just get, like, 20 followers in a day. Yeah. But, like, yeah. now it's impossible. Yeah, it's all about ads, I feel like, Which now. brings me back to, like, I'm glad I went to school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we would be struggling by now if, if that was our only way. Um. But yeah, so let's then now get into like what your style and like what inspired like the style that you kind of manifested w- with your work. As far as textile design or? Or I mean, even personal work because you have a specific style. I mean, all of us do. Um, as, as far as textile design, I do want to explain this. Like when you are designing, unless it's your company or you work for a print studio and they ha- let you have a lot of freedom. Yeah. Um, you're designing for the brand. So, like, whatever you create um, is adhered to whatever the brand's image is. Okay. So, as far as that goes, like, I don't have a set specific style there. um, But I obviously, like, can draw and stuff. So, um, I paint and uh, illustrate and then scan in a lot of my motifs and stuff to make prints. Okay. Um, And I feel like that's important to note for anybody that is going to school for fashion or, like, specifically textile or print design is that like you often don't have as much freedom but simultaneously at least for me that's felt good because yeah, i don't feel drained right because you're not really i mean it's your work but it's not, not like yeah but it's not my work <laughs> exactly exactly but then now let's talk about then your personal work um uh, my personal work um i would say that i do a lot of things with feeling um and i really like a lot of abstract textures and i really like at least in the things that i used to do um i like weird things um and anytime that i do draw or paint or do anything that's personal it's usually coming from a place of emotions Hmm. and i like uh, the things that i make to give off a certain feeling of melancholy okay Uh, sad boy vibes sad boy vibes but it's like um like i did a, a very short series of like very uh painterly looking like the red the yeah red i thing. remember that right yeah um i was going through stuff yeah um and the weekend came out with my dear melancholy <laughs> so i i would say that like as far as style goes i kind of just like do what i'm feeling if that does that make sense i mean i would say like that's kind of like the way fine artists work i would say that i am that and mm-hmm. that's why i don't want to be an illustrator right so it's like more of like commercial work um do you do a lot of like mixed media? Like what? What's your, like what's your favorite thing to use? Um, I really love using gouache, and I like, um, acrylics, and I used to um, use palette knives a lot to like, make, the textures and paintings look different. And mm. then as of late, just because I I didn't have a lot of space in the past couple of years, I started getting into digital drawing and making digital di- digital drawings look a lot more um handmade okay yeah yeah i mean that's something that i've been trying to do with my work now too like i've been working with a lot of like background textures Mm -hmm. with my digital pieces because you know it's always better to have that traditional feel than like that digital yeah feel you know because i feel like when you're just working off a white like screen and then it's like glass you don't and you're not seeing texture then you can just easily tell it's digital yeah but there's people like like sam spratt um who who like have has this painterly kind of style uh like dave raposa that you can't really tell if it's digital or not Mm -hmm. and that's what i want to achieve you know because you can't really beat um traditional pieces the only thing is that in the world that we are in now you know everybody wants things much faster yes so they can't (laughs) really wait for an oil painting after like two months or so so that's the benefit of digital painting but when it comes to like aesthetic and look you can't yeah. be traditional you know you really can't but i do think that like i know ipads are expensive yeah but if you get your hands on an ipad like ask for it for christmas or something oh yeah 
um, and you buy Procreate for $10, I think that it's such a good learning tool because I, uh, I'll be honest, I did not learn to draw at FIT. Oh, really? I didn't. I, I learned how to like um, make better figures and stuff, but I actually learned after I got out because I, I spent a lot more time just drawing by myself. Because I feel like also the iPad just makes it so much more fun. It does make it a lot more fun, but it's also like I was broke, like broke. But um, my mom got me an iPad for Christmas and I bought the Apple Pen and I just started practicing every single day and I didn't have to spend money on paint. I didn't have yeah. to spend money on paper, which we know is like, you and know, no subscription service like Adobe. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, like it, I took I, I really took advantage of that. And then like that's where I started to really love doing digital art and I really, really enjoy it like almost too much almost too, yeah. i mean it's never too much when it comes to like your own work you know it's always a perfect amount yeah but, but again that's why i love my day job because it's so separate yeah and like yeah. i kind of get to have like not two two personalities but two very different worlds and one is just mine yeah okay so this is this kind of leads into this other question that i have where it's like when it comes to your day job, you're doing this like nine to five kind of thing in a sense. I mean, it could be different now with remote. It's just as long as you're getting the work done. You yeah. Know, whatever. But like with me, when I'm working th this job, you know, and after I'm done, I'm kind of like mentally, like creatively, I'm like, all right, I kind of like threw, all, threw it all in there. So right now I've been finding myself not being able to work as much as I did before I got this job, mm -hmm. like on my own kind of work. Do you get that kind of... Uh, thing going on with you um i would say that like my first month i did feel that like tired feeling but now i'm kind of like used to it and it actually makes me feel really good yeah um it's kind of like really motivating and i will say like you know that's probably because of my team at work um because they're so like motivating and like like i said i got very lucky with them and they're always telling me how great i am so yeah. it's like it, it is like really inspiring and also like my senior designer is amazing and she's like um a really inspiring person to work with so it actually has made me want to work more on your own personal yeah. kind of stuff on my own personal stuff and like what i like is that um i keep a personal balance with work where it's like if i'm tired i'm done and then i'll do it later and that's also because you know we are working from home, so it's a lot easier to do that. Yeah. Because, like, I'll, if I stop doing something at 3 and I feel like doing it again at 7 p.m., I can. Right. Um, so that's definitely created it for me. Like, at least the way my brain works, it's made it a lot easier for me to handle the workload. But just being in that environment with people that really love their jobs, too, is really motivating. It makes life so much easier. I mean, even with the job that I have now, like, I before I would just look at the clock constantly yeah. like waiting trying to get the yeah. day over with. but <laughs> I, now it's just like time is flying man it's just like when mm -hmm. you, that's why it's so important to find a job that you actually enjoy because then you won't really be working you know you'll just kind of be doing your own kind yeah. of thing going and yeah, your and, day and, will be much and, and you remember like at my old job I would like cry oh, yeah. cry at 7 <laughs> in the morning every day and be like I want to quit yeah just trying to like hype yourself up just to go into work you know god but um, listen, we made it out and we're at where we got to yes, be. Yes, you know? I, I finally made it out. And, and to that point, it's like it took me two years to get my job. So mm -hmm. it's like I don't want anybody to give up before them because there were so many times where I did want to just be like, fine, I quit, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, the benefit of the job that I had before was the fact that they were very chill. I mean, I'm not bad mouthing them. They were amazing. They treated mm -hmm. me like they made me feel great working for them and everything it's just just the fact that it wasn't the career i wanted for the rest of my life you know right. it's not something i was going into but they allowed me to um as long as i did the work they allowed me to work on my own portfolio you know mm -hmm. just make the portfolio better like do whatever i wanted drawing wise while i worked and that was the one benefit of that i was able to do a lot of personal work yeah and just help me go into the next step you know mm -hmm. um so let's see what we got here um What's something that surprised you about becoming an illustrator? About becoming an illustrator? Or a textile designer. Um, about an illustrator, how hard it is to find work. <laughs> yeah. um, it was a very brutal wake-up call um, after we finished our associates program. And I was like, okay, yeah. I'm still working at a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, What was the question again? 
um like what surprised you about the like the industry the industry of becoming so um that's for illustration and i i would say it's it's really just the difficulty about getting the job as far as textile design goes what surprised me the most about this job is how much i'm doing business like communications if that makes sense and like how technical it, it is because i i like i said i talk to vendors like every day okay and i do invoicing and like a bunch oh, of things so you got like the business side of yeah like that. you're not just like illustrating stuff and, like, yeah so like work. i i do the fun part of like making the prints and like making things look pretty but then i also have to deal with like and i say that not with like remorse like yeah. i i like it i also have to like um like we'll send pack print packages which is like our prints and like what they're gonna look like whatever to a vendor so like say some uh some uh company in like taiwan and then they'll send us back like hey you mean you need to fix x y and z to make it fit on the machine and like so we can print right and then it's a lot yeah yeah, yeah. (laughs) and i think another thing about textile design that i've learned and just fashion in general is how much the process is and how much it goes through because we'll think we're finished with something then we'll show like our director and she'll be like nah (laughs) and then we have to do it again and and um I think like that's like the biggest thing I've learned is that it's not so cut and dry and it's a lot more of a, like a, a team effort. Yeah. Yeah. With my job now, it's kind of given me like the vibe of an illustrator's work, you know, because mm-hmm. like I'm making the work, then I submit it to my boss and then they have like the changes and everything. But I will say too, I'm also dealing with like the other companies that we're working, we're collaborating yeah. with. Um, and then when they have changes, then it counteracts well, the other ones had changes for so it's just like trying to learn that process of of like pleasing everybody yes. with this one piece yeah. you know <laughs> so yeah like with with becoming an illustrator for me it was always just like the thing i wasn't expecting was how yeah how hard it could be how hard it could be as a freelance illustrator how the fact that you have to really be your own boss yeah and like learn the business side learn be the artist where I feel like it's being be, being an illustrator is ninety percent like business management and like getting all the client work, and yeah. then it's only like ten percent the artwork. You yeah, know? and and I also think that like it's a lot harder to give yourself so much structure. Yeah, because then you, and you make got, yourself you, work. You're depending on your own self. Yeah. It's like you can't blame anyone but yourself when exactly. it comes to creating like your career. Mm-hmm. It's a, I think. That avenue is so much pressure Yeah. that that's why for myself, I, I like to maintain it as kind of like a side thing. Cause mm-hmm. like, at least for me, it's like textile design is my job. And then I, I would say I am a fine artist at heart. Yeah, yeah. It's what I enjoy doing. And then like, that's what I love the most is just making stuff for me and however I feel, whatever's going on in my head. Um, and then like the freelance illustration stuff for the graphic design stuff that I do do for businesses is like another side job yeah that's just how it's been for me and it works for me that way yeah and and that's another thing too is like when you're an illustrator you're like trying to make ends meet in every way possible like yeah i'm drawing but i also do photography i also (laughs) do video editing yeah like i also do all these other crazy things just to like make money because and just try and make you know make a career out of it yeah out of it all but um what what's good about that is then you realize what you do and don't like when you mm-hmm. when you're open to all these kind of things like yeah. like you said don't pinhole yourself to this one thing because who knows maybe you like something you'd like something much more than what you're doing at that moment right and and also like i've had this conversation with a friend who does something completely different like um he's a musician and i was telling him like it's very possible to be a successful musician but it's also okay to have like a day job that is yeah. in your field it, it doesn't mean you failed and it doesn't mean that you're not going to obtain your goal someday no. because i i feel like especially at our age there's like such a rush to like figure it out right now that was my life um yeah, I mean, for <laughs> that's my life too years, yeah. um so it, I, I would like to say to like keep people grounded especially younger people it doesn't have to happen right now yeah and just because your friends are ahead of you or because things aren't aligning with whatever your plans were it doesn't mean that your life isn't on track yeah and I would say like my biggest advice if if I was talking to myself when I was 18 is to like make myself have multiple avenues of income because yeah that's like the most important yeah, thing right now in general even if you're yeah. not an artist if you're not a creative person yeah, yeah. like in life have multiple avenues of income so that like you're not relying on one thing and uh, back to what I was speaking about with my musician friend is that like 
you can use your day job to fund your dream. Exactly. Which is like, for me, what I'm doing. I haven't had at least like, I don't know very clearly what my dream is, but I'm so happy and secure in that I have the money to fund to that back dream, it up whatever when, it is, whenever it I figure it out. Yeah. yeah. It's so, yeah, it's, I couldn't have said it better myself. I mean, like out of college, that, that was just my whole thing. It was just everybody around me was already in their careers already, yes. you know, like people have figured out what they wanted to do. They know what they know what they want. They They have what they want. And then there's me and I'm just like, where am I going? You know, like, I don't mm-hmm. know what I'm doing kind of like, thing. Yeah, like, like I'm still working it, retailer. I'm still working at this restaurant. Yeah, or you like, were still working at the restaurant. You're a waiter. Like, you're a waiter and, and doing, like, your drawings on the side kind of thing and nothing's hitting. But just know that it doesn't happen for everyone at the same time. Yeah. I mean, there's illustrators that... Okay, this is one great example that he's he's a poster, poster designer for, like, alternative movie posters all that stuff and he's done amazing work with agencies and stuff uh rory kurtz i mean he didn't start his like career didn't really pop off until he was in his 30s you know yeah. and that's when he was getting like the really big jobs yeah and it's like there's other illustrators even making it at, like in their 40s in their 50s like yeah. that's when they pop off you know and it's gonna happen depend whenever you're ready it's like everybody's ready at a different time exactly and like I feel like it's already so hard to be alive (laughs) (laughs) that it's like all the added pressure that you put on yourself isn't getting you to where you are. That's the it's just hindering you. And and that's a big lesson I've learned as a person. Yeah, because be be easy on yourself. Right, as you know, like we've been friends for a long time. Like I am a worrier. Yeah, I worry about everything, even when I don't need to. Or like, um, and I think like the biggest lesson that people that are like me is kind of like the worry is not helping. No. Like it's not helping you get whatever you want or helping you surpass whatever you're doing. So it's like really important to keep your head grounded in that respect and just know that like it'll happen when it when when, when it, it will. Yeah, because like I will. said, I applied to Macy's three times. The yeah. third time they finally were like, all right, let's give you an interview. <laughs> yeah, it's all about. And then another thing is just determination, persistence. You know, you got to be there ready to go. Yeah. Whenever the time does come, you know, you want to be ready. Um and i mean it's cheesy but it's really you can't give up on what you want you know of course like yeah. you have to just keep at it day and night and until you get what you want yeah you know? and, and i think you also have to be flexible that you might get what you want but it, not, it might not be in the way you want it yeah how you want it or when you want it exactly it yeah. might be very different and and what i mean you you might get something and then it's not necessarily what you want, but it's still a stepping stone. You yeah, know? of course. Like like your previous job, like it wasn't exactly what you wanted, but it, was it just, took it you got from me the point A to point B. Yeah, it got yeah. me the experience to get where I wanted to go. Um, and that's important to know too, you know. But um, yeah, uh, heavy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with me, it's kind of like that. Yeah, so let's, well, I mean, this is an even a heavier question. So then what is success to you? What is success to me? Yeah. It's going to be very corny. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so because I I am a, like a DACA recipient and it, my struggle to even get into college has been difficult. And like I never thought that I would even have a degree because I am limited by that. Mm-hmm. Um, success to me is just like getting to a place where I'm happy and I can afford to be comfortable and that. I don't have to live with the worries that I had growing up, at least financially. And I also want to be able to, you know, stand on my own two feet, but also make sure my parents are okay. And I think that that's what success is to me. I don't necessarily feel like, you know, I have to be the most popular artist or like the most well-known. Yeah. Or even make a ton of money. But it's it's just like, I want to get to a point where I'm really happy with my life and I'm just secure. And, And that's what it is to me and i hope that's a good explanation no yeah i mean pr- pretty much it's just you, you want the financial like freedom yeah to do financial freedom but more importantly than that like i want to feel i don't, I don't know how to say it in english like satisfecha. satisfied satisfied like with what i am doing and like i want to wake up every day and like going to work yeah, yeah. i mean like so like, well, I mean, tomorrow we're working and I'm, and, like, and I'm excited. I'm like, yeah, you're ready, yeah. Re- ready to go. Same thing with me. It's just like weekends are great because you're not working. But now during the week, you know, you're not you're not like dreading the week. When no. You, when you're and, going in. and, you know, like at my previous job, 
Yeah, although that I, was the total opposite. Although I loved... Okay, to, to frame this, I worked at an animal hospital. I love animals. I'm a vegan. Like, it's yeah. a whole thing. Um, the environment, I hated. I love you guys, yeah. but I hated the environment. Yeah. Um, so, like, going from that and going from, like, a very, like, stressful, um, toxic environment with other people... Again, not bad mouthing them. It was no, just what no, it was. It's just not um, for you. And then, like now, I wake up and I'm really excited to like meet with my team on Mondays and yeah. like figure out what we're doing. And like um, right now at work, like I'm developing a print for for fall menswear next year, and I love that because yeah. I love menswear and I love fall. And then just, it's just like I've finally have been able to relax. Yeah, which is hard. <laughs> Speaking of which, so me and you started the same day. Yes. So let's talk about the fact that. We were starting brand new jobs without ever meeting them, meeting yeah. our like bosses yeah. in person, and it's like we start a new job in at home in our seats. Yeah, know? in my pajamas. In your pajamas, you know, and it's just like it what? still didn't feel real. I was just like, "Am I gonna like? Is this the joke?" For the, fir- I mean, it, we just finished our like what our first month of fu- like fully working with them, and it's fully. just like, and now I'm just starting to like settle in. Like this is my new job. You yeah, know? I, I think no, I think we're like two months. The july 19th yeah uh yeah yeah oh wow we're about to hit two months yeah, yeah. um no just now it's like now when i like get my paycheck i'm like okay <laughs> okay you know it's real um but yeah that whole experience for me was just so like weird yeah. because it's like when you start a new job you know they give you a tour of the office and everything mm-hmm. you get to know everybody yeah. like you ha- shake hands and everything and like you right go out now for drinks you, yeah you go out for drinks you, you like learn more about them and it's just like now most of them i just know them by name some of them i've seen their face but even then it's just like okay We're yeah so, like sometimes i'm still afraid to like ask questions because i'm just like are we cool you know? <laughs> is, your, is your team a lot bigger like um, is it big no so like our design team is like i want to say it's it's not big but like our design team still works with everybody else mm-hmm. in the in in like the company so my design team i'm close with my design team because i'm working with them every day but then like then the majority of everybody else that you, you would usually see them every day at work yeah. you know i'm just still like all right yeah. let's uh tread waters and <laughs> make friendships somehow through through slack yeah you know? <laughs> you, you know what's funny is that like i have a very small team it's only four people that okay. like four design uh textile designers or cad designers that i work with that are like my main team and then we also work with our design team and that's two separate teams for me that's a menswear team and a women's wear team so i do have a lot of people to be completely honest i i love our design team i don't know if they like me because i don't know like i never see their faces you know yeah you just see messages that's all it is (laughs) um and as far as my like small uh textile design team um we actually were having a conversation last week at our catch-up about how we don't know how tall each other is yeah and we went around being like how tall are you how tall are you and and like i'm pretty fucking tiny i'm like five feet tall and um they're all like oh i'm five foot seven like blah blah blah. and i was like they're like, how tall are you, Maria? I'm like, I'm five feet tall. With <laughs> and they were like, really? You look yeah. like you'd be a lot taller. I'm like, no, no, I'm like this big. Oh, man, I didn't even get to to that part. I mean, one of one of the designers used to play for the Giants. So, you, yeah, you know, I don't, he's probably fucking gigantic. For probably. All I know. Um, yeah. And like, you don't know these things because you're at home all day yeah. and everybody's sitting. So you, everybody looks the same height. Yeah, so, so my orientation day, my first day, I did it by myself. Yeah. Like, yeah, all by so myself. I, I got an email from one of the designers I work with now, and I was like, okay, so what do I do now? And she was like, I don't know. Because <laughs> it was also their first time hiring um, Yeah, I was like one of the first. Hiring fir- people Yeah, I think I was like, like one of the first few, too, that they started hiring again this year for. And just learning, like, the system, yeah. like, the, um, the drives, like, everything is so different. But thankfully, I think we both have patient people that we work with. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love my team, man. Yeah. They're great. Yeah. Um, oh, and then, like, them sending us a, a brand new, like, lab, like, new equipment. Oh, my God. I was just like... I was like, yes. I was... all And also very scared because you don't want to mess that up either. But yeah. then... I don't know, man. No, like, I, I love my new computer and my yeah. monitor and my little... Yeah. Little things. It, it, it is, uh, I think, a big blessing for both of us to... Yeah, I mean, like, me and you were just texting each other that first week, like... I don't, so are we <laughs> we're working right now yeah <laughs> we're just like facetiming each other like in pajamas like 
yeah i'm technically at work right now <laughs> yeah and I, I was just like I, I don't have any work right now not yeah, to yeah. do but like now that i am settled in i'm like oh, i have a lot of work to do yeah yeah i'm still like getting settled in and like getting more brands in that i'm working on but um eventually hopefully it's yeah. just work yeah. work work uh, at least me, me and you are, no it's okay and then me and you are just workaholics i you am know? yeah yeah it's terrible like if we're not doing something that like if we're done with all the stuff that we already made we're just like yeah like uh, yeah <laughs> i'm awful yeah. like uh especially because i have that habit of like i want to get ahead of whatever i'm doing so i don't have anything like that's on the burner yeah um I'm terrible at that, and I would say that, like, with working from home, the work-life balance thing is definitely a little harder if you do have that problem, because I can very easily sit down and work all fucking day and yeah. be happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, that, I, and that's what, like, a lot of issues that a lot of people are having is just, like, now that their house has become their work, yeah. they can't find that balance, yeah. uh, at least for someone, some people. But I guess, like, when you have a dedicated space for work... I feel like you could find a way to, like, then separate it. Yeah, you know? like, I I have a small, like, office area, and, and yeah. it definitely helps to not be working on my bed. Exactly, I think yeah. I would feel a lot more stressed if I was on my bed or my couch. I mean, oh, Gabby was, like, when it first started, she was just, she didn't have a desk, so she was just working off her, her bed. Yeah. And she was just, she, was, she liked it, like, the first few days, and then she was like, oh, no, this is terrible. No, it's awful. I, yeah. I, I was feeling sick a couple of days ago, and I tried yeah. it, and I was like, no, I gotta get up. I can't. Yeah. I, like, I bought a... A nice desk, uh, it was an uplift desk that bougie. Yeah, it's bougie. It, it like raises up and down and everything <laughs> during the pandemic, and it was it was before I got the job, so I was just like, all right, so let me see how how I'm gonna be able to use this, you know? Like it was just doing my freelance stuff, and now that I'm working at a company where it's just work from home, it's just like I'm using it way more now. But because of that, I'm able to like disconnect from it right after I'm done, and then just like okay, now I can chill out. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, I, I bought a gaming chair. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, those are comfortable as hell. Uh, yeah, I, I could, like I said, I could just sit there. Oh, okay. I, could I was about to say, there. I thought you were going to say it was trash. No, that is the, that's the best purchase I've made. Yeah. No, yeah. You, you realize, like, you don't want to skimp on a chair. Hell no. Because you're sitting on there all day. Hell no. You know? that, that was worth every fucking dollar I spent on it. You know what I want to look into are the ones that are, like, $1,000. Yes. And, like, they look like you could buy them at, a, like, a big lot or something. <laughs> yeah. But apparently, like, their ergonomics are, like, just incredible. They're crazy, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I bought a midpoint one, but it was really, like, it's paid off greatly. I also do play a lot of video games, so, yeah. like, for me, it's, like, a dual yeah. uh, use. But as far as work goes, it's made it a lot easier because I had, like, a flim. I actually did have a flimsy-ass chair from Big Lots, and my back was falling yeah. apart. I I mean, I do have a a good one from Big Lots right now nah. that it has a lot of cushioning, and then it, you know you're able to like would go back a no, little. Mine felt like so we, like I was sitting on back. one of those benches at FIT in the drawing room, like the wooden benches yeah. that just hurt your butt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No good, no good. That's why it's important to invest in where in your workspace, really. Yeah. So I would say like if if it is like work a work from home situation for people that like, it is really really important to just, like separate it. And don't be afraid to ask you. The company you're working for to um, get it for you because I tell mean, them to send you stuff. They have the money. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, they're the you're working nine to five for for their company, so they're gonna help you out in yeah. stuff that is related to work. You know. Mm-hmm. I mean, like I said, they sent us. Yeah. They sent us a brand new laptop. Mm-hmm. They sent us a monitor, a, a dock, everything. Yeah. You know. Um. So, do you have any side gigs going on at the moment? At the moment, I do not because um. I'm doing one of my little gap year things, but it's only for six months. I I am doing one small thing for like somebody's Instagram page, like just a business page thing. Yeah. Um, but I personally just decided to like focus on work and then like my own like fine art, paintings, whatever. Because I I do and I would love to like start doing YouTube. Mm-hmm. So I just re- like really want to take the time to like actually do it. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Um. Well, you kind of we were t- we touched up on this already, but if you have anything else, like, do you have any advice for up and coming illustrators, artists? Um, I would say like at least in the fashion field, just take the unpaid internships. Like, take whatever you can, even if it's a day a week, and just be there and just like meet people. Like, put yourself in positions where, um, like 
you will be able to find opportunities because the opportunities are not going to come to you. Yeah. You know, you know like you, again, if, if it's somebody like me who deals with a lot of anxiety and a lot of worry, um, get out of your head, like wallow for a day and do something about it. Like don't just wait for life to happen. I think that, that that's my biggest advice to people in general, but especially artists, because I think it's really hard for us. A lot of us are very emotional. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very hard for us to um, bring ourselves out of that like negative space when when our work isn't going the way that we want it. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's good to know. I mean, and then everything else that we were talking about before that everybody could uh, go back to that and just kind of go from that. But now it's the fun section. Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking about movies. So do you have any movie recommendations or any recent ones you've seen that you liked or hated? All right. So. I have been trash at watching <laughs> anything. Um, yeah. My life has been a little hard, so I actually started watching Friends. <laughs> never seen Friends before, but I will say... You've funny. never seen Friends before? I've never seen Friends before. Not even like an episode on I've... TV, but I kept getting Instagram like uh, pop-ups for it. So I have been watching that. That's been... It's been good. Do you know? Do you want to know how much they make? Each each of them made? How like much? An episode? How much? It was like a million. Like Jesus Christ. Some cr- Some crazy thing like that. Maybe I should have been an actor. <laughs> yeah but um <laughs> um and then i just saw uh the quiet place i saw both movies i rewatched john wick every other week oh, shit, um yeah. because i love keanu reeves which brings me to uh speed i rewatch that a lot oh i haven't watched that but you I, should yeah you should i mean you're just a keanu reeves i fucking fan. love keanu yeah. I just... you're crazy for this guy but um did you see the new matrix um tra- trailer yeah, yeah. I, I actually i'm i've been like trying to avoid it just because i want to go in cult turkey but i heard like the website and everything like you i think you, you pick a pill or something and then you get different kinds of like trailers yeah, or, or yeah. Like, stuff. it's um i love the matrix and i just love the series obviously yeah. keanu reeves um but i would say you should just watch it yeah you should just do it i have seen the screen grabs of like yeah. him like in the in the bathtub with like the ducky on his head uh-huh. and everything like th- that's cool it's just like a bunch of little easter eggs i've seen but uh, maybe maybe I'll go watch it and actually experience like we, that we whole can, thing. We can watch it together. We'll watch it after this. Yeah. Um, what are you anticipating for that movie? Like, so I don't know. I know. Like I'm. Cause it's, didn't most of them get like killed off or something? I don't. I, so I haven't seen The Matrix in a long time. Yeah, like I gotta rewatch. But... I have to rewatch them, but I just hope that they don't take it in like a completely different. Uh, direction because i did recently see like the latest fast and furious and it was <laughs> it was funny but oh, no, um yeah. you gotta go ahead it was funny and i get what they were trying to do they're trying to like you know without any spoilers for people who haven't seen it but like i get that they're trying to like combine like the whole fast and furious universe with like the cia like no, secret I... agent thing i get it but it was just so out there. I think with this one, they were just leaning into the fact that everybody was just saying how ridiculous they've gotten. Yeah. Um, Absurd. They, yeah. So then they just went with w- what people were expecting and they just like went like 110% on it. 200. Like, yeah. I yeah. was watching this movie and I love the Fast and Furious series, right? Um, I, I was like in that movie theater like, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, I, I was like just... I don't want to spoil anything for people who haven't seen it, but the Pontiac. Thing, oh, going in, yeah, no, I mean that was in the trailer, like, but like okay, but that thing like is so far out there, and I was like, yeah. I was like, why? And then somehow they come back into Earth with no no issues. Yes, you know? but for the last thing, because we saw at at the end, right when they're having dinner, there's one chair left, and yeah. Paul Walker's old car. Um, yeah, it's pulling up. So like, what do you think that they're doing with that? Because I've been know, hung man. up on that. Yeah, like, I mean, I guess that's a big spoiler, but oh well. I'm sorry. We're, we're already in here. Um, Spoilers. Um, I don't know what they're trying to do with that. Like, because they technically didn't kill him off in the movie. Or like, because they just gave him like a nice goodbye. Yeah. Like they split up, but he's still alive in this universe. Yes. So I don't really know what they're going to try. And, are they going to try and bring him back for like the last movie? Apparently, it's now their last movie, the 10th okay. one, because they said they want to go up to 10. But I don't know. Maybe they'll, yeah. like, somehow use his brother again and, like, use a deep fake kind of thing. But... Maybe, but I, I got really excited about it. Like, uh, But, like, he's gone, you know? Like, he is, but I... I just feel like the character is important. Yeah. 
I feel like they should have just ended it that last one. That was it was a perfect ending. Yeah, like they were both going their separate ways. I think that's where they should have stopped. They should have stopped there, and then they just kept it going. And like, yeah, shit is just getting ridiculous at this point. No, this was like absurd. Like, I love John Cena. I love I, I think yeah, yeah. I think he's doing a good job at like turning yeah. his career into like acting. Have you seen uh, Suicide Squad yet? No, but I want to. I was kind of planning watching that man. this week. He was so good. Um, I actually might go see that on Tuesday by myself. Yeah, do but, it. Um, I just think he's doing such a good job, and like I think he did a great job in the movie. Unfortunately, yeah. just to, from my perspective, it was just so outlandish that I couldn't like. No, like I went into this movie knowing that it was gonna be ridiculous. So I didn't. I, so my favorite comment that I saw because I I use Letterboxd, which is an app where yeah. like people like film crit like film like crazy people like uh, not crazy people they're just very enthusiastic about film that's where they rate um movies and my favorite review was like yeah i just came in here and turned off my brain and i fully enjoyed it uh, i think after like the first weird event that they had in that movie yeah, i was just, like okay i'll just accept for what yeah it is. just lean into yeah. it and then once you lean into it and just enjoy for what it is i mean it's a i great film. <laughs> i really enjoyed the movie yeah like genuinely i thought fun. it was hilarious i couldn't stop talking about it yeah, but, yeah it was um, really fun <laughs> yeah no no you're um, not gonna get any yeah. you're not gonna get real racing anymore yeah it's and just I, and i love cars yeah so i was like where where is it <laughs> yeah. um i think beyond that like I, like i said i've been terrible at watching shows i'm, I'm trying i got my own hulu now so like i'm trying to <laughs> i'm trying to like get through my list of things that i really want to watch a lot of good shit on hulu man um and what else? I, I've been like just watching like rom coms, and then I saw the Place Beyond the Pines for the first time. I don't know if you've seen that. Oh yeah, the movie. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. With uh, Ryan Gosling. Yes, yes. Oh, uh, yeah. uh, one of my friends recommended that to me, and um, I love that fucking movie. It, it's so good. He did such a good job in Have that movie. Have you seen Drive? With no. Him? You, but it's on my list. Very similar vibes. Yeah. You would I, love that with I, him. I love him now. Have you seen Nightcrawler? Mm-hmm. it's not with him oh but yeah so then you have seen it i love that movie mm-hmm. too it's just anything with jake gyllenhaal will ma- he makes a crazy person look i love him impeccable obviously because he's pretty but also yeah. like like even with keanu reeves like i yeah. i think he's a good looking man and everything but i think they're such like good actors they're yeah. so good at what they do no like they go full in for their yeah. roles they're, they don't like we all know it. john wick's my favorite fucking movie yeah my boy made like went into like gun training to make sure that he did all those stunts correctly and held the guns right i have a whole tattoo yeah oh my god it's so good it's so um good. oh have you seen the behind the scenes for that like for the the last john wick john wick 3 oh like, yeah what like what about there's it? like all the training they went in for the dogs for them oh the yeah, motorcycle yeah. like the motorcycle oh, so scenes everything so for the last one you know the horses yeah gabby's best friend from high, high school yeah she that was her like veterinarian like uh like horses that she she went and like met john, john wick and everything you met keanu yeah and i think they were they were like at a, at a first name basis kind of thing <laughs> <laughs> that's like my dream <laughs> yeah apparently he's he's just like they say he's like the nicest person ever i love him her name was in the credits too oh, no. it was really cool i should have done that with my yeah. life <laughs> It was, anything, it was great, man. Anything for Keanu. Anything for Keanu. <laughs> a lot of those like crazy fight scenes are so good. I They're mean, so like, amazing like, and like when he uses a pencil and everything, uh, just like wreck people. Oh, so good. I, I also just love. I could talk about John Wick forever, yeah. but I love the universe that's in John Wick and like yeah. the story and how kind of like you don't fucking know who he really is. No, like they never. I mean, we just know that he. He's just like one of the best assassins ever, but you don't know, really, really know how he started out. You know. No, and like, it's and just... I, I forgot which movie. I think it was the last one that the, uh, John Wick Three, where they start getting into like his childhood yeah, and like, yeah, yeah. um, his Baba background Yaga, a little like, bit. I think he was trained with the Russians or something, right? Some like, shit like that. He's yeah. an orphan. I don't. It's good shit. Either way, it's good shit. like I could see myself watching this mm-hmm. for the rest of my life, and I do. Yeah, they made it in a way that they could just keep making movies. Yeah, but... and I think that their casting was great. Yeah, for like everybody. What I'm excited for is the new 007 movie. That that's yes. they've been holding on to that for yeah. like two years or now because of this pandemic, stop. but it's finally coming out. Thankfully, mm-hmm. I, I've gotten yeah. really into like a lot of those um yeah. oh, that genre. Yeah, like I'm in love with it. Have you seen The Kingsman? 
No, but I want to. That's a similar genre, and there's they're coming out with a newer one, which is like, like the beginning of that organization. So it's the Kingsman is just basically like the British, like secret service, not secret service, but it's just like a secret organization mm-hmm. of like, like el- elite, like not assassins, but like agents. That's kind awesome. Of thing. But and they're always dressed like super dapper, like they they have like their dress suits and it's, i think it's similar to uh john wick where it's like they're bull- bulletproof and everything and <sighs> even that great. like from a fashion perspective like so to, good to, to it, circle back so to you, what i do yeah, so. i fucking love that they are so intricate in the detail of like everything in in their universe like down to like his fucking suit is bulletproof yeah so you would love that movie too yeah like that series and that's the same thing like with them i think there's been two already and then this third one is then going back when the organization originally started which mm. which would be cool with john wick too just put keanu reeves and everything yeah a show i got recently into now that i'm like getting obsessed with is uh money heist it's the one on netflix with like uh the dali mask and like they're they're in their red jumpsuits oh yes yes and so it's like a show from spain and then you know it's obviously mm-hmm. subtitles and everything and it's actually really good i, th- I think it's on my list i have a f- yeah. I have a list. Last week I went through like so many shows <laughs> while I was working and and like oh I watched Dave. Oh That's I a, love Dave. So you've seen yes. it. Yeah. I just finished like the two seasons last week and oh my god, it's so fucking mm-hmm. funny. You it's know? so fucking hilarious. I I honestly picked it because I knew uh Andrew Santino was in it and he's like uh, one of the comedians that I listen to on his podcast and yeah. stuff. He was so good in that and and like you could tell that they're friends in in the <laughs> in show real. And in like real life and everything and dave man he's funny he's mm-hmm. actually really funny and then his his rap is good you know i just i think that show's fucking hilarious the last episode for season two though mm-hmm. like like at the concert uh, and the whole turmoil with him and and uh got gata gata oh my god and then when they <sighs> I'll, I cried. I, I cried a little bit on that one. It was good. I was just kind of like... What do you mean? Because... You didn't like that? I liked it, but it's just my own, like... Why? You don't like happy ending? Is that is that your issue? I, I would say that, like, I always want, like, a little more. What do you mean? That was perfect ending for that season. You know, like, the whole turmoil with him and Gata, like, how he was never, like, really giving him anything like not putting him up for like with music and everything yeah was that not I, i'm not saying a it's a ba- i'm not saying it's a bad wrap-up i'm just saying that like you wanted more uh, personally i'd want like a little spring one like what i don't know okay i think this is a perfect way <laughs> i to feel end. like i feel like that could turn into like a whole <laughs> it is could be it could be a whole other thing but um thank you so much for coming on this thank was you. really fun yes. um we got into a lot of things and yes. i think Anybody who wants to be a textile designer, CAD designer, just an artist, or just an artist in general, got a lot of like good points on how to like start out. And the key points were is just like be persistent, um, like make as much networking opportunities as as possible. Get those internships if you can afford it. Yeah, if you you can can afford to be there, you keep your portfolio updated. Stay active on LinkedIn, like make Just friends apply in the industry. i would say apply everywhere even if you think you wouldn't like that place oh man i mean with this job that i have now i was going through a whole year of applying getting denied everywhere and then i know i got rejected so much yeah this was the job that I, it was like i'm at the end of my rope and i'm like am i do i even apply here like i was gonna i'm just gonna get like denied and it's, but i was just like you know what let me just do it. <laughs> and that's the job I got. Yeah. And I love it. Yeah. You know? When when I was applying to Macy's, I, okay, so I'm like superstitious. Yeah. So I was like, I'm not telling anybody, not a single fucking soul that I'm doing this, that I'm, I yeah. didn't. And I would like, if you are superstitious, don't fucking tell people your plans. Yeah. But like, I literally told nobody because every single time I did, I would it, get it, like it would heartbroken do, yeah. when it wouldn't happen. I believe in that yeah. too, though. Like that was kind of similar, similarly with the with the job I got. Yeah. Now. And then I actually told you and Gabby first at, yeah. when we were having dinner, and but was that was after, when I already got yeah, like a confirmation already, letter. Yeah, I was like, okay. Got it. Yeah. Um, and again, like I would say, like at least the biggest thing to learn for me, which isn't even like how to get it is like it's just like from a mental health perspective Mm -hmm. which 
you know, has been hard for me to overcome for a while because it's 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 a big toll on you mentally when you are not getting your career goals or like you're watching your friends achieve them. And it's not even from a place of like um, jealousy, but it's more so of like you feel like you're constantly playing catch up. So I yeah. would say that like if you're in a position where you cannot find a job or it's especially during a pandemic, like just try to try to stay grounded in the fact that just because it's not happening now, it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen in the future. Exactly. And that's a perfect way to end it. So where can they find you? Um, uh, Instagram for now at, at MDLADP. Okay, I'll write that yeah. down on the, on the on screen. The, on, the, on the screen. On the screen. Yeah, my, na- my name's a little, right. little complicated. So no website you want people to look at or? Um, I'd say squarespace.mdladp. I, I do post some illustrations there and I do like updates about textile design and stuff. I, I'm, I'm thinking about turning that website into just like here's how you do this okay, so <laughs> types like of a, things yeah kind of like a youtube yeah. hub youtube hub and i also just like want to make information more accessible to people because i know that like a few years ago i wasn't in a position where i could afford like skillshare or right right or things like that good so it's kind of like this podcast so maybe we could work together on something mm-hmm. yeah yeah all right guys thank you so much for watching thank you. um have a good one and we'll see you then the next one